Hello everyone, and welcome to Crusader Kings 2. I'm Bogmod, and today I'm going to do something a little different. I've played this game a lot, so what I've decided to do is I'm going to start up a little, uh, try my hand at doing a bit of a tutorial. Show the game off a bit, rather than uh, just do some playthroughs. Which always seem to go with, uh, go well, but, you know. So we're going to use the, the standard start date, assuming you had no expansions. This has all of them, but whatever. Island always makes a good starting point. Right over here. Nice little... It, it, no one really picks on you. You got a few options on where to go. So there's there's two good choices to start with. The, uh, the guy's in charge of Munster. Or being in charge of Dublin. The reason why being the guy in charge of Dublin is that your dear father is in charge of Leinster and with his passing you will inherit his lands giving you uh, a good start on uh, aiming for four four lands so we're gonna we'll, we'll, we'll be uh, there we are Earl Merchant of Dublin of the Ua Chainsleg family as you can see at that right above it shows us the, the family name and symbol so We'll just press down and get that going. Alright, so first things first. This is your character portrait. It shows off all of your various traits. Uh, you are always the person with a star. This is you. Got your wife here. Children. Siblings. That little crown means he's your heir. He inherits your stuff. Stats. So we got uh, a few different stats. State diplomacy. Basically, it's your uh, personal charm. Marshal, uh, your fighting power and general ability. Stewardship is basically your ability to manage uh, a large area. You know, economics and administration, that sort of deal. Intrigue is all your plotting and sneakery. If you want to be safe from people trying to have you murdered, or want to be good at murdering people, that's the straight uh, That's the trait you want to go for. Then there's your learning. It's uh, basically it's your religious skill, but it's also good for improving your technology over time. Uh, so that's the that's that. Here's your council. Chancellor, he, his job is to, uh, he does a few different things. He can make people like you more. He can f get claims on other lands for you. And he can stir up trouble between liege, uh, lieges and their vassals. So liege is the guy in charge of someone else. And the vassal is the guy he's in charge of. They got your marshals. They can suppress revolts, which also gives the chance of arresting people. Train up more soldiers. More research military tech, which doesn't actually necessarily make you research faster, but it does spread what tech you have around quicker. Stewards, collecting taxes, overseeing construction, letting you build faster and taking less time, spreading t your technology around. Spy masters, they can be sent to make sh look for plots. Spy network, so you can spread rumors, discard corruption, also increasing your chance of having people assassinated. And studying technology in a foreign land, which is basically them trying to s figure out how other people do stuff and pass those secrets on to you. Chaplain! He can convert people to your faith or and regions. He can research cultural tech, increasing the spread of it going around. And you can send him off to improve the uh, uh, the opinion of uh, the other religious people. Um, so, you know, that's a good one to send to, say, the Pope. Anyhow. Laws. So there's a few different things, right, as a, as a county. Um, agnatic, cognatic. You can, you can highlight most of this stuff and it'll explain it. But basically, uh, sons get first dibs on my lands. 
And because it's Gavelkind, I will spread my land around. But I don't really like that option. Tanistry is interesting. Because I can... Uh... Here's how it works. Is that... It's kind of like an elected system. Except that... Uh... It's only picked from my family, so I don't have to worry about that getting spread around. So I'm going to go with Tanistry for now. And then nominate my son as the eventual heir. Um, feudal levies, that's how much, how, many, how much soldiers my goon, my various uh, vassals send me. How much I tax, um, tax castle holding guys or lords. How much we tax the cities, or how much cities provide, how much they, uh, how much money they give you, how much churches give you to soldiers, how much money they give you. <coughs> I don't usually don't play around this stuff much, but you can. It's all pretty clear. Gives you vassal penalties and how much, how much they can provide. This is the technology screen, divided into three categories: military, economy, culture. Again, it's all pretty self-explanatory. Light infantry improves your light infantry, making them tougher. Church infrastructure, I just highlight the square. When, it, when it's full, you can build the thing explained. Uh, note this is only in your capital province. So, uh, if, you co if you control a bunch of lands, they will have differing levels of growth and development. Here's your military screen, letting you know how many soldiers you can assemble. So, you plots. All the little plots you can do. So I could convert to being Norwegian. Because apparently, that's the culture here. In my little uh, little chunk of land. But I'm going to... I, I'm going to stay Irish. I can uh, get rid of the Jews. Which gets to get you some money, but you lose out on their... Uh, some advisors. Buy indulgence for your sin. Basically, you send the Pope cash. And he gives rewards you with piety. Borrow money from the Jewish merchants. Uh, go on a pilgrimage. Have a grand hunt. Summer fair, feasts. Uh, getting a noble woman to show up at court. Getting a uh, steward. So someone with high steward, uh, high administration skills. A priest. Uh, other things pop up as you continue through the game. Factions. This is something you got to keep an eye on. Um, so lots of little factions that can pop up. Basically, most of the time it'll be things like an independence faction. So a group of nobles are like, we would prefer to be our own kings and our own dukes. And if they gather enough supporters, they'll start a civil war trying to push that claim. Or trying to put someone else on the throne, lower crown authority. There's a variety of things. Finally, there's your religion. The current pope. Moral authority. The Catholic faith. So, in this case, there's no special modifiers. This is the College of Cardinals. You know, deciding who will be the next possible Pope and where he's going to be from. The next possible Cardinals, yada yada yada. Basically, I can bribe my way around if I wanted to uh, influence who became Pope. But uh, I don't see too much need to do that at the moment, especially since I've just started in this game. At the top here, a bunch of little, little uh, options pop up to get, remind of us things that we need to do. Our son is unmarried. That we gotta fix. We have family members that need educations. We need to pick an ambition, which is this little cloud thing here. We can also do diplomacy through this screen. And my son has no lands. Uh, that will give me a prestige penalty in this case. So, um, let's deal with getting my son a wife first. Hmm. Oh, we could, a Hungarian princess. Lots of princesses. So, the higher the rank of the person you find, the more prestige you get out of it, slash, the less prestige you lose for it. So... I want someone with good stats, because those stats will impact your character. I also want her to be young, because once people get too old, they stop being able to have kids. Uh, in this case, I think I'm going to go with the Princess of Hungary. She has uh, the yellow uh, 
these squares at the front are for adult people. They're education. She has the stewardship education, which generally has a fertility bonus. So I'll pick that. Uh, that'll increase the chance that they have kids. Uh, he will get prestige because she is above. He's a mere the son of a mere count, while she is a princess. So we'll do that. We will uh, educate our children. So not, usually it pops up a, a recommended person, but you can assign whoever you want. I'm fine in this case with that one. And here just as an example, here's the list. Here's me. I will try to personally educate my youngest. And a nephew. Be educated. So ambitions next. Whole lot of things. <clears throat> Getting money. Uh, becoming a paragon of virtue. All you just uh, uh, drag the mouse over it, and it becomes pretty clear what the conditions are, what you have to do, yada yada yada. Um, this one is semi-useful. Uh, if I were a pagan, it'd be a lot more useful because it would give me an excuse to wage various wars. I'll have to do things the old-fashioned way in this time. But I'm going to focus on improving my diplomacy. What'll happen is that I'll get events that will pop up to let me raise my stat up to 8. It's always your modified stat that it pushes up to 8. So if I got it to 8 and then got a new trait which boost, which decreased my diplomacy, I could work to improve it yet again. I want my vassals to be loyal, which means I'm going to need a lot of diplomacy. So there's that. Uh, let's see. So, here's Ireland. Yeah. Right, the different screens. That's what I'm going to show you next. So this is the, this is the independent realm. So it shows uh, the top level person in a region and who all their all sorts. So there's England, various divided people. We're all counts, basically, in here, or dukes. Scotland, Norway. So here's an empire. They get really big. Uh, shield, or yeah, basically, coat of arms. Because he's an emperor, so you can have kings serving him. You can only have people lower rank than you serving you. This is the diplomatic relations. So apparently I've got a an embargo going on over here. I've got an ally over here. This is my dad. I can call him to war if, if I wish to fight. This is the religious map. So there's Catholic lands. These white areas are places holy to the Catholic faith. Such as, you know, Rome or Jerusalem. Culture map! So I'm Irish. It's a Celtic thing. Um, it's part of the. Uh, yeah. It's pretty. Yeah. It's, so there's family groups. It's the Celtic family, and the specific culture being Irish. Um, over here we've got the Bretons. They are also Celtic, but they have a different little subgroup. Um, you get, when you have vassals of a different f culture than you, you get penalties. So if I had a goon who was German serving me, we would have a diplomatic relation penalty. He would like me less because I wasn't German. And I would like him less because he wasn't Irish. Um, yeah. Those can change over time. Last I checked, the way to do it is by having a either holy wars are likely to change it when you force places to change religions, or you control a province that is of one of, of your culture, and it can spread to other directly next door provinces. So I am Irish. So that's going to stay Norwegian until I get some more Irish lands around me. Economy. This just shows the incomes of various places. Uh, du jour duchies. So these are duchies. They're uh, larger territories than a single land, which is a county, right? So on this map, I've got the, the county of Dublin, which is part of the Duchy of Tara, which is both of these provinces, Dublin and Kildare. Uh, if you could try... The people who control duchies are generally dukes, no surprise. At least uh, amongst the Catholics and the Christians. Then you got your du jour kingdoms. 
Does your empires? Same idea. Um, if you are a duke of a de jure ter territory and you don't control everything, um, you can start fights for that place. So if I was the Duke of Terra, but I only controlled Dublin, I could start a fight with, with this guy under the excuse that he should be serving me as um, his lands are supposed to be part of my dukedom. Revolt risk, chances of peasant uprisings or whatever. So, uh, here we are. Revolt Vix, 2% because uh, they're Norwegian and I am, but I am Irish, so we don't get along. Dynasties, so it just kind of shows what families are in charge of what place. So we got the Godwins and the Dunkelds, etc., etc. Opinions, direct vassals, public trade zone. So, uh, there's republics over here. I'll cover them in later. But basically, they're uh, elected merchants, and they have their own little system, uh, which includes the family trade zones. Yeah. So there's that and that. The game has many different speeds. You can use the spacebar to just to, to pause and unpause. Um, I generally play around three, but uh, you, you can hit pause at any time when you're worried about how things are going. So my goal, I'm gonna I'm gonna just show you how it's done, as it were, is to try to become the king of England, or not England, sorry, the king of Ireland. I will use a variety of different methods to expand. But I'm going to uh, start all that next session. This has just been a, a touch on the uh, the interface. One other, oh yeah, one other thing. Right-clicking on places always brings up various options. Useful to know. Same with left-clicking. So I can build different structures in, in cities. Your direct vassals, you can build stuff for them as well. Here's my wife. I could right-click. I could go to diplomacy. Give me options. I can go to where she is. So if I was looking for someone, I could go to try and find them. Anyhow, this is a uh, yeah first step in the tutorial. I'll cover more things uh, next time once we get the actual gameplay going. See you all then.